Hello, hello, everybody. Um, sorry, we were chatting, so we are late. So welcome to the LISP working group. OK. Um, yes, it's working. So to catch up with the time, uh, this is the not well, as usual. It, it says what is supposed to be a contribution to the IETF, which more or less is everything we discuss here and in the corridors drinking and enjoying our coffee. Uh, there is also the code of contact in a certain way. Uh, this has been shown around for a while as well. The fact that we, we treat each other with respect, uh, okay, and we, we have just technical discussion, nothing more, okay. Uh, if you didn't do it yet, please log on the Mythical system. You can uh, click on the on-site tool, so you have uh, you have it on your phone. You are allowed also to use the full client, even if you are in the room, but uh, uh, don't share your audio, don't share your, uh, uh, your video, because we don't need it. We have it here, okay. Um, the, these are the usual pointers. Uh, concerning our meeting, so the agenda, the minutes, we will do it, and the various audio stream, the mythical links, and uh, the Zulip room. Okay. Um, before actually going to the status, because we want to spend a little bit of time on the status, today the, the agenda is like this, so we will discuss a little bit on the status of the various documents. Okay. Uh, 
Then we have two presentations about two working group documents. So the reliable transport and the young model. And um, then there will be, is this somehow cut the slide. So there is a, the bottom of the slide is cut. I don't know why, uh, it's a format issue. Is, is there any way to adjust it? No. Okay, no big deal. Anyway, um, Dino will present uh, three uh, not yet uh, working group uh, documents. Two are the, the BIS documents that are in, I mean, in the charter is the fact that we want to bring us on standard track the, the multicast document that we have. And there is a, a third uh, multicast document for now is an individual submission uh, which is uh, supposed to complete a little bit the multicast uh, saga, I would say. Okay, so unless there are any comments on this agenda, I go one slide back in order to, to, to have a look at the status of the various documents. Okay. I guess I can go back one slide. <laughs> um, this is the, the, if you look on the data tracker, this is what we have right now, okay? So you know that first we have the, the list T, so it's traffic engineering. Padma, you were working with Dino, right, on this one? Yeah. <clears throat> so we finished uh, the review for the list traffic engineering and uh, Dino, what did address all the concerns that we have so far. Uh, I am presenting, I'm preparing rather the Shepherd document at this point. And um, we do have to do a couple of things uh, about the IPRs and, and there's also an INA um, pointer that we have, uh, we have to actually have a, we have a request in the doc, but we need to make that official. If not already done, uh, at this point, I would like to have a working group last call. I think the document has been around for quite some time and it's pretty mature, unless anybody has any objections about that. Great. I think we will do it on the mailing list after, the, after the, the, this week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we have the, the list name encoding. Uh, so. This is already in the ISG hands, and he went through ITF last call, uh, where uh, a couple of people pointed out that this document uses ASCII for the to encode the names, and uh, uh, should use uh, UTF-8, but was not clear what are the changes that that we should do to the document. So this is uh, in, in the telechat at some point, we hope to have a good directions, more specific direction. And Jim, I think wants to say something. Yeah, hey, it's Jim. Um, yeah, so I, I, I've been following that with interest as well. And um, I, I gotta be honest, I'm kind of a little stumped um, and I got the impression that Dino is too, in terms of what we need to do because um even the utf8 has its issues and um so so D i don't know if dino's around but i, I i'm not sure what uh what his thoughts are yeah dino it'd be great if you can give some thoughts on that i mean obviously it, it's on the tele chat um week after next i think so i you know i'm going to push it as best i can but um i i guess we need resolution to that but as I said in the email thread, it wasn't clear to me how we actually resolved that unless you saw something that I didn't, which is quite likely. Uh, okay, this is Dina. Um, Jim, so I addressed all their comments except for the one that we're talking about. And yeah. they want it to be Unicode slash UTF-8, but they were arguing on which the right reference for it. So we could change it to UTF-8 because they say ASCII is compatible with that, but they can't agree on the reference and they won't provide text. So we're at kind of a crossroads. So right. somebody somebody needs to break the deadly embrace. 
Okay, well, I can probably uh, do that during the... Uh, let, let's see what the IESG reviews come back with. And on the telechat, I'll, uh, I'll bring this up. And if there's no objections, then I'll, I'll just, um, you know, go, go with that. But um, there obviously won't be a reference if they can't agree upon it. So I'm not going to allow one person to hold up the document. I was about to, to add exactly this point. I mean, uh, this is IETF last call, and there are just two people that, that were talking right. among themselves <laughs> in a certain way. That I, I, I understand the point. I understand the point. But I mean, to block a document, and, the, and we have already implementations with ASCII. I mean, that... Right. So we'll, we'll see what the IESG says. Um you know, in terms of balloting. And then um, if if it's an issue on the tele, if it's not an issue on the tele chat, then I'm inclined to let it move forward. So um, so let, let's just see what comes back with that. Uh, Jim, this is Dino. Um, yeah. If they just say we need to point to something, ask them to provide text so we don't have to keep going back and forth. Just right. give us the reference. And if they just want a global replace of ASCII with UTF-8 pointing to those reference, then we could do that. But make right. sure they give us something rather than we try something and they say no, we try something again, they say no. Right, because at the moment, they can't agree. yeah, at the moment, as far as I remember, they can't agree between them what the right reference is. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. You, Jimmy. Yeah, ju ju I mean, just just to point out, you know, I've got my eyes on it, so it's not being ignored. So I just wanted to let the working group know that I, I'm aware of what's going on, and uh, you know, I'll do my best and see what let's see what the balloting says, and then um, we'll go from there. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, next in the list is the Lisp Geo. Well, about geo coordinates. Um, we have here Kieran, this is shepherding the, the document. Can you say a word on the state of this document? Hi, um, Kieran. I reviewed this document and um, it, I found it in a pretty good stable state. And Dino also followed back with answering my review comments. So I'm pretty happy with the document. There are a couple of things remaining. I think IPR call is still pending on the document and mm -hmm. the IANA registration thing that still needs to be done, right? Um, so we can check it out. No, no, I just think, but we can double the check type, anyway. The but new type, you have to do something about it. It's, it's, in the IANA. it's already there. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's good. I need to update my document to reflect that then. So we, I do have. Yeah, please, please. I do have two questions for you. It's mostly out of my curiosity. The two comments did not satisfy my curiosity. One was about the use of terminology geopoint. So the document, I could not find any reference of geopoint. And the reason I'm picky about it because we are using a term which will be used globally, not just specific to this document. And my concern is about why do we have geo prefix in front of point? Like, ge why do we call geo point? M rest of the documents just outside literature just uses the term point for defining a point which is described by a geo coordinate. This is Dino. So, geo point is in the glossary um, section. And the reason uh, the spec introduces geo point which is a GPS coordinate, as you say, is to differentiate it from a geo prefix. So we can build, a, a geo prefix is a sphere where you have a, a radius, and then with the mask length, you can decide how, lo how large the sphere is. And a geo point is testing a, any point that's in that sphere. So the point is the actual GPS coordinate in a kind of um, structure, you know, either two-dimensional or a sphere when you use altitude. Yes, so that makes sense, and I kind of understood it. The only question is geopoint is the term which is used in this document, not us. Yeah, okay. And second thing was I made a comment about the reserved flag. And, I mean, if you have added it, there must be something 
in your mind that how it could be used in future because there is no reason for alignment or other reasons that you would need to add this flag so and then from the backward compatibility perspective let's say you want to extend that reserve space for something else you have to update the document anyway so do you see any backward compatibility issues again so the beginning of that 32-bit field has a bunch of bit fields and we want it, it to be byte aligned because I forgot what the field is after that. So that's why we just put it reserved. And so the, I, to reflect your comment, I said that reserve field could be used in the future to add more bit fields so we have more room to, to extend it. And, and if we do it, then we have to have a compatibility statement. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers my doubts. I'll update the Shepherd document to reflect the mm, Ayana think and should be okay from my side then. Thanks. So we can go for the working group plus call as well. Bill, yeah. after this meeting, okay. apparently. Okay, thank you. Um, the next two in line which have been discussed and reviewed in, uh, uh, since the last meeting is the reliable transport and the young model, but we will have the, the, the presentation right after. Uh, this introduction, so we don't need to talk about that. There is only one um, additional thing. So we need to work on the LCAF BIS documents. Uh, um, we know that uh, Anton Smirnov proposed to take care of that, but uh, then we we didn't follow up. So we don't have a really an update on those documents. Uh, we will do it. I mean, we will be busy with these others. And uh, there is also the LISP DDT and LISP NAT uh, document. Uh, DDT is just a, a BIS document uh, moving to standard track so that we have the allocation. The NAT document has been around for a while. We asked Albert Cabellos to, to be the editor of, of these documents, but we are waiting uh, his reply because he said, I'm not sure if I have funding to, to attend the ITF in the uh, next two years, uh, I'll come back to you. So we are waiting. Let's see if he replies or we need the other to find another editor for those documents. We will see. And I think that's it uh, for from this side. So I think we can go uh, to Mark that will present an update on the reliable transport. Uh, Mark, you are online. You want to share uh, the deck yourself, or I'll do it for you. Can, can you share it? Um, I hope you you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. You want okay. for me to share it? Yes, please. Here we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, we are just providing an update on the progress on with of the reliable transport draft. Um, um, the version online is still 04. Um, during the week, we'll update with version 05. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the updates that happened during this time, 04 and now 05, is that we got a very thorough review from the working group chairs. Um, thanks, Luigi Panma. Um, the review was quite detailed and it identified multiple sections that, that had if you want uh, inaccurate language and, and not very well crafted descriptions. We've been working on cleaning up all these sections and, and yeah, simplifying text wherever possible. Um, but the other interesting part of this update is that this review also brought some interesting points that we thought would be worth discussing with the working group in the call. And this is what the rest of the presentation will be about. Um, next slide, please. OK, the first point of discussion is this that we have discussed sometimes is how do we establish or how do we decide to establish a reliable transport session? What the document have right now is, um, as, as you know, we always start with the regular UDP registration. And what we define in the document is we use the R bit to signal that the ETR signals the intention. I want to switch to reliable transport. 
and and the the map server accepts if you want uh, the switch through using the RV again in the map notify. <clears throat> Um, but one thing that we are clarifying in, in this version of the document is that this RV is only about the intent to establish a reliable session, not about the protocol that, that, that the ETR wants to use uh, to establish this session. Okay. And if you go to the next section, either the next slide. Sorry. Um, so what this means is that with the RV, what we are introducing is something called serialization delay. Uh, I think this word came from, from Dino in one of the reviews. Um, the catch here is that initially after after the acknowledgement, the ETR doesn't doesn't know what protocol to use. Right? So once the the switch to the session is accepted, the ETR will go and depending on what's locally supported or configured, will try protocols one one by one until the maps map server accepts. Right? And this is the serialization delay. We had this text in one of the previous versions, but in version three, after work group discussion, we removed all the alternatives to TCP in the document. And, and after removing that, we also removed this text on, on how to choose the protocol, because now the ETR only has one option. Right? But, um, and I think this question came from Padma. Um, is this maybe an occasion or, or an opportunity to discuss whether we need a capability exchange mechanism in Lyft? Um, one use case would be this one, right? Uh, signaling which which protocols are supported for a reliable transport. But I don't know if there are other instances or other drafts that, that would you, you think would require something like this. And it's a question that I leave out there. Maybe at the end we can discuss. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Okay, Padma. Oh. Uh, one, oh, uh, one of the uh, motivations behind this comment for me was um, also about deployment, because when we start deploying this feature, you might actually end up with some of them understanding only UDP or TCP and whether you wanted to actually do an exchange of capabilities, but also with a preference so that you do not, the, the previous version I, I read was they're going to try one or the other and one of them will come out. So you, hmm. there's no determinist, determinism about which one is going to get chosen. So what I, what I was, trying to bring up is that, first of all, there's a backward compatibility problem if you don't have a capability exchange. Number two, you will not have a determinism on which one got chosen in the future. So I thought that a change, an exchange of a capability might be a good way, saying that there is a preference. Maybe you may want one or the other, uh, but at least have a way of making this transition seamless as possible. That that was the motivation behind. But um, I will let the working group comment on this. I would like to to, to add um, a comment. For me, it's also a matter of uh, extensibility. The fact that we don't use another reliable protocol, it's pretty fine. But assume in the future someone wants wants to use something else. How do you extend Lisp in order to do it? Okay, that, that's the question. Doesn't mean that in the document you are have really to solve the problem if you want to use Quick, for example, but uh, at least say, if you want to extend, you have to do something like this. But this is out of the scope of the document. So, yeah. I agree with you, Luigi. I think having the architecture to be able to do it is more important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, Daryl Lewis, I can. Uh, just wanted to mention that, of course, in the original intuition of this document, like a decade ago, TCP was kind of the only assumed transport protocol that we were imagining. But uh, I think that um, given the prevalence of other protocols like Quick that may provide the same services to the, to the client, that it's probably reasonable to allow for that in the future. 
personally, I don't think that a capabilities exchange is required given the amount of other bits because you could imagine ascribing other reserve bits to four other protocols. And given that we're talking about less than five ever, probably, then it seems to be overweight. Could be a solution. Capabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm just saying that that uh, there's other bits to add that in the future if needed. Thanks. Dino, you wanted to add some? Yeah, to, uh, this is Dino. To your point, uh, quick is coming, so we have a glimpse of the future. Um, I would also say one other thing, um, and if you're going to allocate bits per protocol, let's allocate three of them, TCP, quick, and multicast quick, because you may want to send reliable multicast reliable messages to more than one map server that would scale really nicely so you don't have to replicate so so i i think daryl's suggestion is a, a really good one thank you okay mark i switch yeah. slide okay next slide so are we going to update the version five with this suggestion um let's discuss it maybe in the um, so do, do you think it's final? You, you, you prefer to go with the bits? And, um, we can do that, yeah. Okay. We can even ask the question on the mailing list. I mean, we, the discussion went this way. It has yeah. been suggested this. Does anybody disagree? And okay. if not, and, and you, the, the authors, you agree, then, then we go for it. Okay. Sounds fair. Okay. Um, yeah, next part of the discussion in the review was about the use of the words withdrawal and rejection in the draft. Okay. Um, as of today, the draft uses the word reject um, to indicate that, for example, when a map server um, receives a map register that is rejected, I'll, I'll explain that later. And uses the word withdraw with, when a mapping that was stored on the map server for some reason is removed or lost. Okay. Um, as part of the comments, it it get, well, what was indicated that these words gave give the impression that the map server suddenly becomes authoritative over these mappings. <laughs> um, but that's not exactly the intention of, of the draft. Uh, it's more about compensating for the fact that um, once we have the reliable transport mappings are, are permanent, let's say, right? Uh, the DTR sends a registration to the map server. And now the idea is that map server and, and ETR are, are in sync. Uh, the, the state of the two is in sync, right? And the refresh, reject, withdrawal, um, all this is, is about covering the diverging, diverging state between the two okay? and, and how things evolve. If you go to the next slide. Um, um, yeah, for, for example, trying to give an example, right? Um, map server, let's say it's not configured yet to accept registration on a given instance ID. Uh, that's when the document uses the word reject. Eh? My, uh, the ETR sends a registration, uh, says, okay, it's DZ ID uh, with this instance ID. Uh, the map server is not ready, says, okay, I'm not ready to, to accept this, and it rejects. Eh? Or, or maybe the second example, right? The reliable session um, between the two is down. The mappings that were registered before with we use using this reliable transport or withdrawn from the map server. Right? That's when the the word withdraw is, is used, right? or that's the intention of the document. Um, mm -hmm. It gave us the impression that either the examples were not very well given, so we are cleaning up this part and, and detailing more of these examples. But the open question for the group is, do you think these two words are not the right ones, we should use something else. Uh, um, is this a confu confused, confusing use of these two terms that gives the impression that we are transferring an authoritative role from one to the other? Okay. I can um, express my opinion, uh, Luigi, speaking okay, okay. for myself. I mean, for me, the words are okay. Uh, when okay. I read the draft list, just it was unclear. 
And okay. what you just show in the last two slides is fine as long as it's uh, uh, mirrored on in the draft. Okay. Okay. Then we'll, we'll include this. Um, if I remember so, well, uh, this is Padma. If I remember well, there was one concern I had uh, regarding this, and especially when you talk about the rangers, is how these rangers affect and create holes or not. What I what I think I would suggest, and you know, um, it's just a suggestion, is that to have more um, examples of how this will work, uh, so that we don't leave it too undefined that we may have multiple people interpreting it differently. I, if I remember right, there was a question of uh, whether you're having a long mask or short or and how is this really going to affect what it is. So if you can give some examples in the doc, that will help. OK, yeah. Um, we have some. We have included some. Let's see how they look, and we can extend more. OK, um, next slide. Okay, um, then there were some comments about registration refresh. It's, this is a message that has gone through some back and forth uh, in the mailing list. Um, well, as you know, registration refresh is a, a, a message initiated on the map server to trigger a refresh of registrations. Um, what the intention of this message is, is to be used on, on a certain list of triggers, like after a reliable session is initialized, uh, after a config change on the, on the map server, so that it can accept more mappings when there is an information loss on the map server. Um, what we've tried to do in the next version is, is to clarify a little bit more the, the use of this message through these examples. Um, I think by now um, this message has been very useful in the implementation and has been working well. Um, we're trying to reflect this on appropriately on the draft, um, but but yeah, um, so I think there's not much of a question here. Um, just wanted to point that. Um, Please read the next version and let us know if if the usage of this refresh the of refresh message is is clear. Okay. Um, next slide. <clears throat> yeah. Now <laughs> the state machine, right? Um, yeah. The sentence about the state machine is the description is very hard to follow, and and we agree it's it's very hard to follow. Um, we are working on a simplified description or representation of this state machine. Um, we're following one of your suggestions to split it in two, uh, the transitions between UDT, UDP and reliable transport, and and then to follow the, the states of the mappings within once we are in reliable transport mode. Um, maybe the question for the group here is, if you have any RFC that you like, where a more or less big state machine is described, could you share it with us so that we can follow the example? Uh, it's this, this, yeah, to be honest, this has been the reason we've delayed this update because it's, it's kind of complicated to rewrite this. Um, okay, so next one. <clears throat> and one last one is on IANA sub-registries. The, the current version of the draft specifies a registry request for, for the message types introduced in the document. But there is no request for the message codes associated to these messages, right? And there was this comment that should we ask for a request of registries for these codes? Um, yeah, a question for the working group is do we need to? The types is enough, or we should do a request also for each one of the codes? Do you know? No. Okay, I'll, I'll leave the question here. <clears throat> and the next one. Yeah, and, and this is what we already talked about. Uh, do we need capability exchange message? Um, looks like we are reverting to using bits. We'll, we'll bring it up to, on the mailing list. <clears throat> and that's it. Yeah, next slide. I think it's the last one. Yeah, and I'll have, well, we'll update version 5 this week. 
Okay, thank you for the IANA section. Uh, I don't have the issue on top of my mind, but I will look at it and and and, and suggest whether to go one way or, or the other. Okay. Um, awesome. Any any other question or comments from the room? No. Nope. So thank you again, Mark. And thank you. Switch to the next one, uh, Rashad. There is a pointer there, you can use it to switch yourself the slide. Yeah, yeah. This? Yeah. Wow, technology. Uh, hi, I'm Rashad. I'm going to be presenting on behalf of all the authors. Uh, the slides were prepared by Alberto, but he could not present since he's not here. Okay, so we got, I think, three sets of comments. Um, on the mailing list end of last year, beginning of this year. And this is an update on, on the comments. Uh, so uh, Med provided good set of comments. Uh, the base list specs are all outdated. Uh, you know, asking for justifications, use of IANA module, uh, security considerations for the new coordinates. Uh, some Yang specifying stuff like, you know, should we be using the groupings from RFC 9179? Um, there's uh, inappropriate types uh, and some editorial stuff. So, um, the, anyway, I'll talk about next steps a bit later. Uh, those were the comments from Tom Petch. Uh, abstract is a bit sparse, so we'll have to beef that up. Uh, license again, the editorial stuff is uh, outdated from what I remember. Uh, there was a switch from in the previous, in the last version from using enums to identity. Uh, Tom suggesting that we reconsider to use uh, enums again. The IP addresses we're using are I think of an incorrect form and then a bunch of editorial stuff, ID reference, reference clause, and a bunch of nits. Those were the comments from Joe Clark, Yang Doctor. Um, the, the regex will have to revisit. I think we're allowing stuff which we don't want to allow. Uh, and then there's a bunch of editorial stuff, you know, normalizing using P Yang, capitalization, copyright, okay, et cetera. Uh, he also provided feedback from uh, the comments that Med provided. So that's the quick update on the comments we got. The plan now is for Alberto and myself to address those comments ASAP. I think that document has been around for a long time. <laughs> and I don't know if there's been any discussions if the next step after that is working group last call or if there's some Absolutely, we are waiting for that. <laughs> well, I know then we were waiting for all the other disk docs to go through, so that's my excuse anyway. Uh, I think this is it. Any any questions? I have a Thank yeah. uh, please. <laughs> so I was going to suggest something because this document is a big document and I really want to help. So. I was going to suggest to the working group is that we have a number of documents that are advancing at the same time, so that whether it is during the Shepherd's review or the review, to actually couple that with also reviewing the Yang section that you are working on. So I think that would help for any kind of discrepancies or any kind of discussions so that all the documents will hand in hand, you know, and go work together. So I mean, that may have been some of your okay. concerns. No, it'd be really good. I mean, we were in Yang, how can anybody refuse that? So I think it's, it's going to be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you very much. much. Dino? You can control from there. From Hi, I'm Dino. I'm going to give an update on the multicast standards track document status. And I have about a dozen internet drafts of my own that I'm trying to make a decision on in the next, well, immediately. Okay, so the agenda for this talk is uh, 
uh, give a status of the standards track documents for multicast, look at some other documents, and describe the set of three multicast documents and how their functionality is split logically among documents. And then quickly at the end, just go through my, my documents and what my intentions are for them. So RFC 6831 was built and moved to experimental back in 2013. That was basically the sister of 6830, which was the main list data plane document. This is the multicast equivalent. It's a pretty long document and has a lot of design and details. It's 28 pages. That's the one that the charter says we wanna put standards track. So with permission from the chairs, they said, go ahead and create an individual submission called Farinacci RFC uh, 6831 BIS. And we will then turn that into a working group document so we could start the standardization process. I'd like to do that immediately if that's okay. The other multicast document is the signal free document. Um, I'm, I'll describe each, what each of those are, but um, the signal free document 8378 is pretty much the same status as the other one where we created a, a Farinacci 83. 78 BIS, and we want to turn that into a working group document so we could start the standardization uh, progress as well. And I'd like to have that done immediately as well. There is, uh, you accept the question now? Sure. Prasad sure. In, in the queue. Go for, yeah, sure. Prasad, please go ahead. Uh, wasn't the question, uh, thanks, uh, Dino and Luigi. It wasn't a question, it's just a, a clarification to what just Dino said. Uh, the 6831 is a large document. Uh, it, it does describe all the LISP scenarios. Uh, what has been added to the 6831 BIS draft uh, is the head and replication part of it, which wasn't present in 6831. I'm not, I'm not following. The, can you repeat the question? It's not too clear. Uh, maybe speak up a little bit. We have. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it wasn't a question, it's a clarification. Uh, am I audible now? Uh, Your hello. voice is not uh, intelligible, so we want you to repeat. Uh, uh, okay. Um, it... Dino? Yes? Okay. Okay, yeah. so it wasn't a question. It's, it's more a clarification uh, to say that uh, 6831, this draft contains text for head and replication, which 6831 did not contain. This is what I should, I think we should do, Prasad. Can you type in your question in the chat and then we'll have Luigi read it? And just let me, why don't I just continue and then we can take it. Yeah, please. Is, is that okay? Type the question on the chat and uh, I will uh, relate to it. To the yeah. It's, uh, Steve, you, yeah. Or is, did you Steve, I just say, I think you said that the BIS draft contain, contains text on head and replication that is not there in the non BIS draft. It's uh, what? That's what I think it said. I don't understand. What does what depends on header replication? He said that the, the BIS version contains text on header and replication for ingress replication. That's what 8378 does, yes. He, oh. Yeah. Originally. Right. Okay. So I think I know what Prasad wants to, to say. Okay. So we put updates into um, the BIS document to indicate that the RLOX doesn't have to map from the um, EIDG to RLOG, that it could also contain a unicast um, uh, RLOX set, which means head end replication would be done. Yes, correct. Did we get that right, Prasad? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keep, keep so that, uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah. Um, you said you said yes. Okay, so it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> keep going. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Okay, next slide. It's not advancing. So we have this um, this draft. VDAS is basically uh, Prasad, me, Ashwin, and Stig. That's what VDAS stands for. The four authors, and it's a group mapping. Um, we want to make that a working group document because we think this completes the, um, the set of three documents that are necessary. And I'll explain that on the next slide. Um, however, 
we want this doc this um, to be an experimental RFC. And it turns out that this document points to both the BIS documents, but those BIS documents do not point that way, so we can move the standardization uh, forward. Okay, next. So let me just do a refresher on those uh, set of three documents. So 6831 defines um, how you run overlay multicast on underlay native multicast, okay? And we also added that you could put an RLOC set that has an underlay multicast also coupled with unicast addresses. And that's basically already um, documented in 8378 as well. The key differences between 6831 and 8378 is we call one a signal-based approach in 6831, which means we use PIM on the XTRs to signal um, group membership across the um, underlay and through the underlay where 8378 uses the mapping system to describe where the receivers are. So that's the fundamental difference of both. Um, and, um, and it's 8378 we introduced that the RLOC set could contain both unicast and multicast RLOCs, where we thought that in 6831 it could do the same thing, so now they're both consistent. And that was what Prasad's comment was about. Next. Now this list group mapping, I presented this in Prague uh, but basically what the draft does, it formalizes uh, what G is supposed to mean. So normally if on the overlay, if you're running a group G, that's an EID. In the, all the other drafts, we said that the underlay G was exactly the same address. So what we're doing now is we're just distinguishing, saying there's a G EID and a G RLOC, if you will. And so we formalized the um, terminology to say that the overlay state is SEID that sends to GEID and that the underlay ha has an SR loc, which is the XTR that's encapsulating, and it could send it to a unicast R loc or a GR loc. So how do you map the outer G to the inner G is the next slide. Okay, so we had two mechanisms. We had a hash-based mechanism where all the XTRs could do it independent of the mapping system where they just hash the GEID to get a GR loc. Um, and in that case, it's the XTRs that have the policy and the control of what underlay group is being used. If service providers or the underlay operator wants to have control, then we decided to use the mapping system to find out what the mapping is. So if you had uh, a GEID of 224.111, you could then put in the mapping system a distinguished name of group 224.111, and it can map to an RLOC of say 225.111, and that's what it would be used on the underlay, and that would be within the group allocation range of what the underlay provider would want to use. Next. Okay, any questions on that going forward with those three documents? I will be honest. So. Um, there is no issue for me to go forward. It's just on the mailing list. Our mailing list is, let's say, a little bit sloppy. So open five calls at the same time wouldn't work. So it's just a matter of timing. We will do it uh, right after the, this week, one after another, in order to progress all the documents, including. So you uh, want the request to come at one time, or you want it serialized? No, no, serialize oh. to serialize because otherwise. Uh, We'll so, not gonna so, work. But, so you're but saying wait on these or come with 6831 first and 80. No, 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 no. Wait, but we will do it in the coming weeks. Oh, I mean, okay. no, it's just uh, okay. just this. Okay. So I have no action item to send anything on the mailing list. True. Oh, you can ask for reviews on the mailing list yeah, in the well, meantime. For yeah, yeah, for yeah, a good yeah. 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> reviews continue to be requested. Fair so enough. should I move the documents to from Farinacci and individual submissions to ID? No, no, no. You just wait right now. We'll wait, we will okay. issue the wait call on the direction. mailing list, uh, and then uh, we will tell you when to submit uh, the ITF uh, zero zero. Uh, okay. It just will be, will not be on Monday. That's the point. Okay. But will be soon. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I have a bunch of individual drafts that I'm responsible for that um, nobody else is authoring. So I wanted to go through them really quick. And the three green ones are the ones we just talked about, so we can skip over that. But uh, we have the two yellow ones, um, the, the lispers.net uh, NAT implementation, uh, 
is under ISC review and it's gonna come up for um, reconsideration in August. And so we're gonna let Elliot figure out what's the next step. And I think he's gonna work with the chairs on that. And the working group chairs said that since mapping systems are no longer in the new charter, that the list decent thing um, either has to fade away, cannot become a working group document or make it uh, informational RFC. So that's why it's marked yellow. So we're gonna have Elliot look at that as well. Um, the telemetry draft and the mobile network draft, we're gonna, I'm gonna let time out and expire because I'm tired of up, upgrade, updating it. Um, the mobile network draft is how um, LISP works on 3GPP. If you remember the, the ITU days, uh, Kieran, when we went there doing that. So I'm gonna let that time out because 3GPP is not interested in it and it looks like the working group doesn't wanna do anything with it. It was basically putting LISP on eNode beads and UPF devices in the 3GPP network. So those will time out. I'm not gonna update those. And then I, um, the satellite network one is relatively new. I, um, and I would like to keep that alive, but I'm not sure what to do with that. So um, I need help from the chairs or the working group to decide what to do with the um, satellite draft. I have a question on this. Do you think can be included in, in the document about use cases do you, that we are supposed to publish at the end? Or, I mean, uh, uh, so you talks, see- It talks about protocol operation, but it doesn't define anything new. So the use case is, is satellite, and then you give, there are also technical details how to make it work. Yeah. Could be in, included in, in, in that, yeah. that uh, one. I mean, uh, how long is the spec? 19 pages. Um, Ooh, maybe I don't know. Somebody else better. is going to have to do it, though. I, I can't do I it. see your point. Yeah. Uh, but let's think about it. Could yeah. be an option. OK, next, next slide. So this. Uh, this is just me make, giving my opinion about the drafts that are working group drafts. Um, and the green ones are already in the pipeline and everybody's talked about that. The, um, so that's great, the green ones. Um, the ones down here, the list mobile node, the red ones, the VPN and the list perspective, those are really important documents and they need to um, be resubmitted because they've already expired. And I just put some names back to, I thought who could kind of um, be, take champion of that. Mark, um, well, let's see, the list mobile note draft, it was um, Daryl, Dave, and me were the authors, and that's gonna not be the case anymore. I mean, we're, we're not gonna be actively working on it. So somebody needs to pick up that document. Uh, Mark is expert because he knows the EID mobility, he's responsible for EID mobility. So he'd be a likely candidate to, support that but there's there's nothing to do other than editorial work so i don't there's no design work that needs to be done there but it um it's a working group document and we just need commentary on it the vpn draft was always um, um owned by victor and um so we need somebody to look at the vpn draft and um mark's very familiar with that and has contributed and he's a co-author so i thought he would be a good one the LISP perspective, I thought, I mean, given Luigi's history with LISP, that that might be a suggestion as well. And then for the blue ones, uh, LISP Nexagon's being worked on. EID mobility is Mark. I don't know who can do reliable. Well, a lot about transport is and Yang. We already talked about that. That's in process. Um, but those aren't those aren't my documents. But I think they're covered by the working group. So I don't know what people think about that, but. It's just my opinion and my suggestions on where to go forward because I'm going to retire soon. <laughs> that was what the last slide was about. <laughs> so usually the chairs do not, uh, are not authors of the documents. So this may be because we are, let's say, in a kind of a closure of the whole work. We may discuss with Jim and see if. Sure. We can do that. I mean, uh, so. Okay. That's it. Thanks Done. Right. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dina. Sure. So, wow, we, we have five minutes spared. That <laughs> it's very rare. Usually, we are we are at the very last minute. So. 
Does anybody, any other business that wants to rise or discuss? Rashad. Right, Rashad, I have a question. I just overheard you saying that chairs can't be authors of documents. Do I hear, hear, you, hear you properly? So, yeah, no, it's not exactly like that. Um, if I take over a, a, a document, it, I'm the one pushing it, the main author. This is kind of a conflict, right? And usually you don't do that. You quote of the documents, but it's someone else that champions the documents. You yeah. see, usually that, there are there are corner cases, which this uh, is one. I mean, we are a pretty small working group. The documents are there. It's just editorial. So if Jim agrees, we, we, we can do it. Okay, yeah, but because I was asking, I mean, I've had this happen to the working group I co-chair, and basically the other co-chair was the main author of a document, and he basically had no say in any, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. anything. So anyway. Yeah, just to follow up, Luigi, it, 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 it's perfectly fine as long as your co-chair actually does the um, uh, the call on consensus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Luckily, we don't have any... So we are fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fine. Okay. In that case, thank you very much for uh, coming and see you in Dublin. Thanks, everyone.